So I am using Dehancer for the first time. Now, full disclosure, they did give me the program to use and test out, but what they don't know is that I was already planning to buy anyway. They did say to be 100% honest about my review though, so I will. And if I am being honest, I don't spend a lot of time color grading, but I do know that color grading significantly impacts your story. It gives off a feeling, an emotion, and it all has to do with color signs. Honestly, it's just as important for your story as anything else. It's literally a key color. The answer is a film emulation plugin that works with DaVinci, Final Cut, and Adobe. I use Final Cut. I judge things based on how simple and convenient they are to use. I'm not a colorist and I don't want to be a colorist, but I do like investing into things that help make my life easier. That being said, what I'm looking for is something where I can get the color grain I want and spend the least amount of time grading it. Something simple, quick, accurate. I know it's a lot to ask, but I heard the answer is good, so let's try it out. So first things first, the answer does have a log conversion tool, so you don't have to start from scratch color grading. Just select your camera and it automatically converts it to Rec. 709. Now the film stock is the best thing that the Hanser has to offer, for me at least. It's the sole reason I wanted to get in the first place and it has a shit ton of options. And if you know about film stock, this is going to be your best friend. I don't know much about film stock. The best thing to do is just explore and see what you like best. Right now I'm using Kodak Vision 3 because it just looks cool. The film developer tool, if you know a little bit about film stock, this is where you emulate how your film is developed. So basically, you just adjust the settings like contrast, gamma, color, and saturation. Film compression tool lets you fine tune the highlights. I enable it most of the time because it gives you a better highlight roll off. So it gives it sort of a smoother look. The expand tab is a specific tab to adjust your black points and whites. And the Hanser recommends adjusting this as soon as you pick your film stock. So don't ignore it. Now, film print is interesting. It emulates how your image will look based on different mediums. You can choose the paper profile and it will literally change the whole look based on that profile. Again, this is something where if you know a little bit about film, this is going to be your best friend. If not, you just play around with it and just figure out what you like. Color head is basically a tool to adjust your hues and color tones. You use these little sliders and you can adjust your shadows, midtones, and highlights. Okay, so now this is the fun part. This is what you pay for. The problem with other film emulation plugins is that they're not adjustable. So you can't customize it and you can't make adjustments. They're either too little, too much, and they just look off most of the time. Now, the Hanser has presets you can use, but they also let you customize it if you want to. And honestly, that makes all the difference. All right, so first things first is the film grain, and it's literally that, the film grain. The good part is that they have these presets for different film formats, but you do have the option to adjust the intensity as well. Halation is that reddish glow you get in the highlights. Again, different film formats adjust the intensity, but you also have a fully custom option. Bloom is that glow you get from the light sources and highlights. Same thing here, fully adjusted or you have these preset options. So last section, these are more stylized effects to emulate film imperfections. These are all preference and you can't go too crazy with this because they'll just look terrible, but they are meant to add some characters to your video. So it's nice to have. Film damage is like the little imperfections you get on film, like the hairs, the dust, and the scratches. And you can even specify which one you prefer. So you want more hair or you want more dust? And <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool actually. Film breath is like an exposure breathing effect that you can add. You can adjust the intensity. Gate weave is like that jitter effect that emulates film going through like a projector. Same thing, adjust the intensity. You could just play around with it. Overscan is pretty cool. These are templates that give it that super eight or super 35 look. All preference, all for the added style to your video. One thing I did want to mention is that the Hanser does have an app you can use for photo and video. Now, the one thing I've always struggled with is matching my preset for video and for photo. I've been using the app for my photos when I post on my IG stories. It honestly just makes life so much easier. It's very useful. Okay, some pros and cons just to roughly go through them. Now, the film stock is amazing. It's not just presets and they're not just LUTs. So you can fully adjust it and you can go in depth to get the exact look you want. It's big. The effects are pretty elite. I don't know many programs that let you adjust the effects as much as the Hanser does. It pretty much lets you fine tune it if you want to. And like I said, the issue with other plugins is that they don't let you customize it. And I avoid them because of that reason alone. Exporting presets is big. I'm a big fan of presets because I'm very 
very lazy and I like using presets. And overall, it's pretty easy to use. If you want to be simple like me, it is pretty easy to apply the presets that they have. But if you want to fine tune it, then you can get very complex and get the exact look you want. Some cons, it is a little too desaturated. I found myself adding color to it and it's not a big deal. It might be just the way I'm exposing my video, but um, it is something to be aware about. It can be overwhelming. I'm a little uneducated when it comes to film. So when I saw these settings, I was overwhelmed and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they do have a guide explaining what each setting does. But when you first look at it, it's just a lot of info. And I'm a visual person. I know they have sliders to adjust the hues and tones, but having a tone curve would have been perfect to have instead of just sliders. I think personally, I just don't like sliders. And lastly, it's kind of expensive. They do have a subscription based model, but it doesn't really make sense based on the pricing. You might as well just buy the full lifetime axis. As of now, the pro version is going at about 450. It's not that cheap. <laughs> All right, so overall, I like the answer. Although I do wish I had it sooner because I wouldn't have spent so much money on buying LUTs and presets just to figure out that most of them kind of suck anyway. So whether you're a colorist and want to get into the little nitty gritty of color grading or you're more like me and you don't really care, you just want something fast and efficient, the answer is the best of both worlds. I do have a promo code. You can use Elvis X color for 10% off. Thank you guys for watching and um, use my code. Please. Please.